in the prior videos, we've gone through getting to this differential equation from the Schrodinger equation, and then I talked about the fact that when we have a differential equation of this form, the solution must look like this. So what we can then do is combine this together, and we see that our individual coefficients for a given energy eigenvector has a certain time dependence, and we see that it has to be a, which is some coefficient out front, we don't know what that is yet, and then e to the negative k, where k was that term out in front. And if you look, this is in fact e to the i, i over h bar, and then t. So that's the form of our coefficient. So our goal here was to understand the time dependence of our general energy eigen, our, our en general states when expressed in the energy basis. So what that means is our general state before we had a sum over n of these cn, right, and it's i here because it's a specific one, it's n here because it's a general one, e to the n. We now rewrite this and so we're talking about it in general, so n reappears. So we still have n, but now what we want to remember is that these values are going to vary. So that actually needs a subscript too. So we're left here now, going up here, as we can call this a to the n, sorry, a subscript n, these different coefficients overall, e, and there's different ways to write this, but negative i, so that's just square root of negative 1, e to the n over h bar times t, and then e to the n. So it takes a bit of work to actually get here, to understand what has happened, but this is really key. So to go through this briefly, we have different states. Right? So maybe there's two different values, maybe there's three different values, maybe there's an infinite number of possible states. But what this means that we have these different ends is that there's a few things that's changing in every single term. And one key is here, that this overall coefficient is telling you basically how much of energy one eigenstate versus energy two eigenstate is there. And if we think back to our basic spin system, like sometimes we would express a state that's like, oh, well this is, you know, an equal amount spin up and spin down. Or maybe it's more spin up versus spin down. Now we can talk about equal amounts, energy state one and energy state two, or maybe it's more energy one and energy two. This term is capturing that. We then have this complex phase here, right? This has this form of e to the i theta, which we've seen a lot, but now theta, oh dear, is equal to negative e n h bar over t, right? So notice that this has this complex phase, but now there's actually a time dependence. So this is changing overall how much real or imaginary it is, somewhere in between, as a function of time. But the magnitude of this is always going to be equal to 1. But what's key here is that the energy is appearing here, and this is the energy measurement that comes from applying the Hamiltonian to this state. And then again, these are different states. So what this might look like to give you a really concrete example is that I have, and let's just use two energies, right? So we have energy one, we have energy two, two energy states. So my first coefficient, I'm just gonna call it a sub one, and then we have e to the negative i, e one, t over h bar, e1 plus a sub 2 e to the negative i e sub 2 t h bar e2. So we have two different eigenstates. These complex phases are different because they have two different values of energy in here. They can't have the same value of energy. They're going to be different values of energy. And then we have two different terms here. Um, we have to think about how this is going to be normalized and there's different ways to prove whether or not your normalization would be changing with time. It won't be. Um, one thing to think about here is if t equals zero, what happens? Well, if t equals zero, for this very specific case, we see that I have a1, but now I have e to the zero. What is that equal to? Well, that's equal to one. e1 
plus a2. And now I have this e, what's this again? It's e0, e2. So we can actually figure out from the initial conditions, so the initial conditions of t equals 0, what these are equal to. So these overall coefficients here capture the starting coefficients of your quantum state. And then this is the phase that's showing how it's evolving in time. And then we have our eigenstates. So hopefully the terminology, the notation is starting to make sense. Again, we spent a lot of time going through spin one half so that you could get practice with the notation. Um, but now we're adding this whole new layer of both being in an energy eigenstate and then understanding time evolution. It's really important to note that you can't just plop this down for any basis you want. Um, again, we wouldn't talk about spin evolving this way in terms of just put spin up and spin down there. No, this is, this is specifically for when you're talking about the energy basis. And we will look at doing some basis transforms between energy and other basis, but you really want to have that energy term uh, show up here. So I hope that has gotten you to the point that you understand. Um, really, again, this is a concrete example of what this notation means.